Hey, it's Chris. Let's do this crowdfunding roundup this week. Now, I thought there were going to be five big projects to talk about. Now, there are a big four and a definitely a handful of others that deserve some attention because there's a lot of money getting thrown around this week. A lot. And it's really interesting to see how it gets spread out. So let's go right into it. What do you need to know? Big projects on the horizon, project updates as well, because we have a few things ending this week in addition. As always, if you like this, throw me a sub. Let's go. First up, Tenarius Adventures, the Ultimate Edition. Now, this is a very interesting test point, but you're getting almost $700,000 within 24 hours. This is relatively insane in terms of the amount of money, given also the amount of backers here. And that's mostly because they've got an existing pledge level, they've got a day one incentive, and they just have a big box storage solution for all of the previous backers. Now, if you want this big miniature, this is 180 millimeters, folks. 180 millimeters. The thing is massive. If you're a day one backer, you get it for free, but otherwise it's gonna cost you an extra $30. But you have to be backing at least the $89 pledge level. Look at this thing. I would love to have that sitting behind me on a shelf, right? That would be amazing, especially because they offer the pre-painted option as well. Uh, as someone who doesn't paint, that looks freaking fantastic. Now, a lot of the campaigns though this week, I'll say, suffer from the same criticism that I often talk about. How do you play the game? No clue. No clue on this page. The vast majority of this page, it doesn't tell you how to play the game. It gives you the overview of all of the stuff, right? The miniatures, the 1,151 cards, the 110 quests, 160 campaign hours, the reviews, the mechanics, the higher level overview right here, right? It doesn't tell you how you're actually differing this style of game though from the others. And that's my biggest criticism on this page as well as a couple others this week that you'll see. This is one of, if not well thought of, preeminent of the campaign style games. Obviously, your recently acquired Aeon Trespass Odysseys and Oathsworn's Frosthavens might have something else to say, but of those four, this one included, I will dare say this one is by far and away the most accessible in terms of rules, overhead, and actual getting to know how to play the game. Unlocking the stretch goals, getting additional chapters, NPCs, items, attack cards, stories, everything that goes along with this like they've done previously with their other campaigns. Now you'll notice I said you have to get at least the $89 pledge level here. $35 gets you just the upgrade kit. $89 gets you the storage box as well as the upgraded board and the stretch goals. So that's really why. That's a lot of money for a returning backer, but is it enough to incentivize you? Well, I guess the answer's right there, right? 2,700 backers of the 40 some hundred at this time of me filming this are doing that one. Where are the rest? Well, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. Team effing standees, right? 200 people and I might be one of those people, but this is just the Tenarius Adventure, the standee edition. That's the only problem, right? The essential gameplay of Tenarius Ultimate with the previous, with the upgrades from their last campaign, it's gonna $189. And then this super massive box with just a whole bunch of content, 489, think that's it? No, that's actually not it because there's an all-in unpainted for 650 and there's an all-in cosmetic painted for $839, which there's still almost 100 people doing that. Now, some of these dragons and some of these things look pretty freaking sweet, but you guys in the comment section can tell me uh, how well those painted ones actually look in person because we just saw this last campaign be delivered in the last two months or so with some of the painted dragons and the painted uh, like apocalyptic, weird D&D-esque miniatures, which we'll talk about in a second. And these are the huge miniatures that you're seeing, right? And they give you clicks of all the miniatures and just all of the content. I mean, this is just a massive metric ton of stuff. When you get down to the storage box right here, it looks more like Isopharian Guard, which has also been recently delivered in terms of the size. It's kind of cool that they did this finally and it can store everything, but that's a lot, folks. My question for this game and all these other games like this is, do you need more? Do you honestly need more? I need a, the only thing I need a storage for, right, will be an Aeon Trespass Odyssey suitcase, as well as a Marvel United uh, carry-on suitcase, because those are my two, you know, biggest bleh. Also waiting for wave two and three of Madara. Ooh, forgot about that one. But yeah, this is a ton of money. I mean, you're getting the dragon miniatures, the madness boxes. Look at all this stuff. I mean, this is massive, right? These are all huge, huge miniatures on big scale items. So do you need it all? No. 
is it actually that variety? I think people really are well thinking of this game. Like I said, it may not be as deep, but it's deep enough that people are very happy with it, like this sort of thing in the first place. Do I need an audio app? No, I don't. That's okay. See, here's the painted stuff. That's cool, you know, if it looks half as good as that. Returning backer bundle, this is what you're getting, right? And so it's probably not a bad value with sleeves, with additional cards, with the stretch goals, as well as the secrets that you're getting. They break it all down here, but you can see, like, as I said, right, like, how do you play the game, right? Here's the add-ons, here's the legendary expansions, here's the upgraded miniatures. That was the big thing they put out with Tenaris Adventure. Well, they redid a lot of the miniatures for Arena the Contest, the original version. So the Dragon Collection, again, another $89 here. You get all of these big, again, like just having a whole shelf behind me of those guys painted, that would be freaking fantastic. And I think these are kind of cool. Uh, Manticore right here, uh, a little bit of a Beholder-esque guy, and then a few other things. It reminds me of the D&D god, the... Uh, Spider Queen, whatever her name is, of the Underworld for the Dark Elves. Anyway, so painted, that looks cool. Golden Dragon, that I think I think that was either, was that an add-on or was that the free one from last time? I don't know, that's massive too. That and that one from this time, uh, that would be freaking sweet. So again, look how big this thing is. Give the blown up view here, that's massive. So I don't know, right? Like you, you don't see any of the how to play. I mean, it tells you right down here, finally, a little bit of it, right? Cinematic Plot, 100 Quests but no actual like play play. Alex has a couple of videos on here. King of Average has a couple of videos on here, Hungry Gamer. So if you wanna know more, I mean, there's enough info on Board Game Geek. I just wish there was actual like mechanic mechanic at the top that says, okay, you're gonna be D20 rolling this. You're gonna be upgrading your skills. How, what are these unique things? Or how does it differ from some of the other stuff? I just wish there was a little bit more of that on the page. But it's a third time around too. So are you gonna get the new people? I mean, that's really the question in this situation. And the honest answer is when you have 2,700 people that are returning of the 44, not as much, but we'll see kind of where this one goes because again, I'm filming this within the first 24 hours. So what's this going to look like by the time you guys even watch it? And what's it going to look like again, two or three weeks into this campaign? Yeah, we'll, go, we'll see where this goes. DC, the deck building game. Again, if you had told me that this was going to be the second most funded game today, I actually probably wouldn't have been terribly surprised. Now they're doing something very similar, Cryptozoic is, with this campaign because not only are they giving you sort of a Justice League main box expansion, they're giving you a next one versus one rival style game and then a few other trinkets and tidbits to go along with it. Now I like the idea of Dark, right? I'm not a big fan of Shazam versus Black Adam. I just, those guys have never done anything for me from a cinematic standpoint, especially recently, but also from a comic book, lore, video game, show, no just nothing, right? Give me a Constantine, give me even a Swamp thing, give me some of those others. You had to have a better pairing, but I think that that's definitely playing off of the more recent um, cinematic experience in the DC universe. Say what you will about that in the first place. Take that for what you will. Now you have to defeat your enemy uh, three times in order to win. And as you get defeated, you actually become more powerful. So it becomes harder for your opponent to do it, thus balancing the game out. So you don't have a runaway leader like these games can have as the main criticism of DC deck building in general in the first place. Now, some of the other trinkets and tidbits that I mentioned is they're offering these one shot packs, which are having uh, specific heroes like Black Canary and Green Arrow, as well as Vixen and the Atom in those sets. And you don't need to have some of the other main box expansions rebirth to actually play it. You're getting a little bit of a Legion of Doom here. Now, I like the idea of this. Now, they went with the original artwork from like the show, it almost looks like. So that's kind of a turn off. It really dichotomy there is just whoosh, you know, too different. Crossover Crisis, you're getting some packs there. You can reuse some of the villains and uh, upgraded levels of heroes as well in the new stuff, making it more accessible, more modular to be imported over. And then they run you through again, you're gonna get a little bit of exclusivity, but the exclusivity is mostly this alternate cover as well as a play mat. And that's really the main difference here. They give you a little bit of what's gonna be new as well with the actual gameplay. You're gonna be sealing cards that are gonna score you points right away, but that will also have abilities that will allow you to get more actions depending on if they're special seals. And then you have, let's see, what else we have? Transform. So your Shazam, your Black Adam, you know, transforming. Uh, and then they go into a little bit more of the details here. They talk about exactly what I just said confrontation, blocking, weakness cards that are gonna allow you to lose them, but uh, lose them at a penalty to avoid losing points overall. And it goes in line with their other Rivals games, I guess, as well. So here's the artwork I was mentioning, right? Like just aesthetically, just so different than the other stuff. It just kind of throws me off. The one shots, 
And then they run you through a little bit of all of their other stuff down here. All the reviews, all of the other add-ons that you can get. Now, there's not as many add-ons available as there were during the last campaign. Because during the last campaign, they offered basically all of the expansions that had been put out. So, and, and they were actually offered at a good price. But there's just not as much available here. Take your pick. Uh, the pledge levels are less in that sense, but $75 to even get in. But the only problem I have with this is that you're getting a bunch of stuff you may not want. How many of these expansions or promos do you want? That's really the question because last time they had these mostly, I believe, marked as exclusive. Uh, now you're seeing some foil ones here and some oversized. Uh, here's a Nemesis card. Here's a main deck card. So we are going to see some exclusivity, just like I mentioned. Uh, sleeves, add-on games. So you can get them, I guess, separately. It's just going to cost you more, which... It's kind of okay, kind of not okay. Take that for what you will. Shipping is whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, it did really well. So I don't blame CryptoZoat for coming back. And now I'm not sure this would be the one I would jump into. And again, as someone who's looking into getting this, uh, similarly uh, to the game we just covered previously uh, <laughs> with Tenera's Ultimate Adventures, why am I getting this now? What unique mechanics? If I'm just looking at this game for the first time as a DC newbie or a board gaming newbie, there's nothing on this page that appeals to you. And that's why, talking up next, Shipwrights of the North Sea Redux. Now, you can make an argument that, like I did previously last week, I think they should have abandoned this name. I think they're trying to rewrite history with this game, and I think that's fine. But if you tell on the main page that one of the cruxes of this game is that it's going to be completely different gameplay-wise than the previous one, then why even use this namesake in the first place, right? Right? Now, the thing I'm going to give kudos for that I was just mentioning and alluding to is one, they always say, you know what, support us at retail if you want to as well. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of extra stuff here, promo pack and some sleeves and some discounted middle coins. That's fine. But straight at the top, gameplay mother freaking overview, right? What are you doing in this game? How is it setting itself apart? Key features, five rounds. Now, this is the interesting aspect of things. Most victory points at the end of five rounds, right? You are drafting cards up to six per hand, and you're going to have different drafting variants for solo, two player, as well as three to five players. So three different ways of drafting depending on your player count. But then after you have your cards, you're going to be playing them one by one until you've played them all. And they're gonna be different actions available at those cards, also with how you want to discard them depending on what's in the upper right-hand corner as a separate value. The other interesting aspect of this is you're gonna have up to 10 different actions per turn in order to basically optimize your Euro strategy. 10 different actions. And that's not me uh, being facetious or overstating. It's actually in the rule book if you check it out. And you're gonna need to because that's about all that's on the page in terms of the gameplay flow. Promo pack, great, six cards. Are you a promo junkie? Awesome. Are you a gold coin junkie? Awesome. How many times do you use the promos? How beneficial are six cards in a massive deck otherwise? Spoilers, they're not. But if you wanna support them, that's why you do this in the first place. And Garfield has, uh, loyal fan base when it comes to this and you'll see what i mean by that because not only are they offering this game they're offering sleeves hey jared jared's got a video on there he doesn't do many of those so check his video out um but they're giving you sleeves for all of the other games that they've put out essentially and you can bundle them if you want now personally i think this top row looks just as pretty as the bottom row but some of the completionists, like those who got the Queen Feldian boxes, are going to want these bottom ones that match. And so you can pay an extra $100 to get sleeves that match. If you have that much disposable income and you like Garfield games that much, go for it. Not going to be me, ever. Actually, I hate those when they're stretch goals, truth be told. One of my least favorite stretch goals ever. Now, the other thing about Garfield, no pledge manager. So if you want it, you pledge. If you don't, you retail it. Or you're like me and you end up in a math trade and you get a Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Finally, it came in the mail today. So there you go. 125,000, doing great. Next up, we have Cyclades, the Legendary Edition. Now this again is a very interesting remake of a previous edition. And as many people have noted, the concern about you know Kickstarter bloat, Kickstarter excess, this one actually, as a surprise, has trimmed things down. This is not just an amalgam, a throwing together of all of the previous stuff 
in one big box in one container to give you more of the same thing, right? They've really redone the game in this territory to control, but also auction bidding style board game with a Greek mythology background. Two to six players. Now you'll notice though that you can play head to head with a two player, which they say they've redone the two player version to make this one actually that much better. You can play two versus two, or you can play with three teams of two, and really in a way that other area control games just don't mimic necessarily. The other thing that I'll mention right now from the top, and this is the big question, is you've got a meeple pledge. And I love the look of these meeples. I love the price of these meeples, $65. With shipping though, I can't imagine that even if I miss out on a little bit of content, that this isn't gonna be cheaper at retail. And so if you're like me and you're looking at the retail side of things and you want the meeples, well, then you might be better off waiting. But if you want the miniatures, you're gonna get a lot more of these alternate sculpts as well. And now they went with common goals, they went with stretch goals, and they went with miniature goals. And again, I give them kudos for separating those out as well, because you're not necessarily missing out in that sense of content being pledge locked behind you know, the miniature one, right? You're getting other miniatures, but you're not getting other content necessarily that's different in that aspect. Like when the cards are getting unlocked with the stretch goals, as you'll see in a moment, they're at all common stretch goal levels. Miniatures, okay, tons of them, new game. And I love this, again, as I said earlier, new stuff, show me what's different. Tell me, don't just show me all your miniatures, you did that already, but I mean, you've got the stuff right here, right? Classic team play, modular board that's going to be different in every single setup. And they have a gif of that uh, somewhere around here as well, but they've revamped some of the mechanics that people were otherwise concerned about with some of the god powers, like Zeus with the deck shuffling and trying to get through the ones you want. Pegasus searching, I think they called it, on the uh, forum side. Uh, new creatures, new heroes, shorter time frame. You need three uh, victory conditions to win. I forget what it actually is. Um, three uh, buildings that you have to have built, uh, three metropolises, uh, uh, that's what it is. Because the previous game only had two, but there were certain ways you could do it, and there were certain actions that would allow you, like Hades, they would say that you could like babysit and manipulate and try and snatch victory out with that. So they've addressed some of the common criticisms, it sounds like, from the people who have played this a lot, uh, just from the analysis I've seen from potential or interested backers and parties. Now again, it's gonna be 100 plus dollars for the miniature pledge, but I like this option. I like what Awakened Realms did with the Great Wall. I mean, I'm not really maybe gonna ever have the Great Wall in my collection, but it's one that I go, yeah, for a price point I could do a little bit better with, I'm okay with that. Here's the macro tiles that are gonna be rearrangeable in the modularity um, that's gonna go along with them. They give you all of the stuff, stuff, stuff. The miniatures, great, great, great. The classic deluxifications here to go along with it. And then they give you the standees, team standee, right? So liege. There you go. Coins, stretch goals right here. You can see there's the common stretch goal card content. Again, doesn't say exclusive. So it looks like you can get that at you know retail if you're like me and looking at it from that aspect. It's just whether or not you're gonna be able to get the miniature version at retail. And that's probably gonna be a less than a yes answer at least right now that I can give you. A little bit of revamping of the artwork and the monsters and the miniatures that go along with them. All your heroes that are gonna be available to you. New stuff, old stuff on reviews. There's plenty of information out there. There's the rule book on this page as well. You're setting up, you're bidding on the gods that you want. Those gods have different area control mechanisms or maneuverings that you can take. The offering phase is what you're doing that essentially. It run you through what the different gods do and how they're gonna be interacting. I really love this because this gives you the best hands-on of any campaign I've seen recently. And then, you know, when you encounter other people, you battle, you roll dice, and that's maybe the part that people may not like as much of the rolling the dice. Downloading the rules, again, you've got enough content here that you can check it out in the combination of the rules. So, I mean, it's a well-run campaign, I would say, from that aspect of things. It's just whether or not you feel like you want the miniatures version, and if you don't, you can go and probably get a retail or some other version later on down the line. And that's why it's got $300,000 here in the first day. So I give them a lot of kudos there. There you go. Next up, Mystery of the Abbey. Old game, remade. So we have a new edition of this game where you're moving around your workers from location to location. Each location has an ability that you can take and you have the uh, action of asking somebody who is in your own uh, section a question. And they, as the rules of the game say, have to be honest. However, if they answer your question, you have to in return answer one of theirs. And you cannot ask them who they have or who the killer was, uh, but you can ask them anything else along those lines. Sort of like a very souped up, guess who? 
if you will. A good portion of their stretch goals here are actually social stretch goals as well. And this is what you're getting in the game in the first place. Your 96 cards of the three different areas. And it's sort of like an awkward guests who done it, if you will. Deluxifications here with wooden meeples and a little bit of overview. Moving it around, every four turns you have mass and you just basically get one move. You move your monk across the abbey. It can go in any area, but if you end your movement, like I said, in another monk's room, you can ask the question. Room effect, resolving it. Events happen as you go. Runs through the different room effects. Gives you ways to manipulate and find out who the killer actually is. And then it gives you the bundles down here. Now, is this a good deal? I have no idea. Now, it says with new expansion and a crypto set exclusive. So probably, to be frank, but this is a lighter, different style of social deduction in the manner of awkward guests, like I mentioned. So you really have to kind of like this style of game in the first place. And me personally, this is not my style. And I'm okay with that. 15 bucks, it's probably going to be equivalent. You might save a few bucks on the retail if you can get the Kickstarter stretch goals elsewhere. But, but that's really the gamble that you're taking in this sense. So mystery of the Abbey. There we go. Now, next up is Time Lancers. A very interesting time travel based game. What you're doing is you're taking your time agent using time space gems to potentially alter the course of previous events. And these previous events are actually going to be in the form of modular tokens or modular places on the board. And you have to capture a certain amount of them or complete your objectives to end the game. And what I mean by that is you're gonna have a certain card of about four objectives that you have to do based on the certain events or certain patterns that are out there. And if you complete that, or if you capture nine of these historical events going back in time and using your actions to do so, that's the end game trigger. First one to do that successfully, obviously wins. It's a combination here, as it says, worker placement, set collection, and the modularity, because the modular setup is going to be present, but it's also going to be dynamic in the sense that as certain events ripple, it's going to change the actual board shape of depending on what's out there and when those events that are out there versus the event that you capture and how you're changing it. Your tableau, as I mentioned, is going to be utilizable as you fill it up you have up to nine different actions that you can take because otherwise you can't normally take two actions in the same row unless you're using this tableau, I believe. And on your turn, it's just one turn per round per person. And you are just moving up to three spaces. Very specific rules on cannot move into certain spaces, cannot end on certain spaces with other workers there. But as you move across those rooms, they are going to each give you particular actions anywhere from your own time machine to places in history, as well as events that are gonna be happening on a round by round basis, because you're gonna have time enforcers, basically your time cops, that are going to be sitting in some of the areas across these uh, modular spaces on the board, blocking you from going there in the first place. As you're going along, you're collecting resources, and then you're capturing these in order to complete these faction goals that I mentioned. There you go. Here's the modular setup that I talked about at the beginning your tableau on the event cards to improve each action that you're going to be taking on your said tableau in the first place. And why back now? Well, it's going to be a rubber mat as well as wood components. Now, you may be looking at like I did the first time and I said, wow, what is the price point on this? If I'm getting a rubber mat as well as wooden components for everything, right? And a game tray. That has to be freaking expensive, right? Well, it's $49 if you're checking it out at the time of me filming this. It's $10 more though after 24 hours. That's a big jump. People are going to be mad about that one. I'm looking at it right now going, maybe I should back it just to get in on the early bird, but I don't know how I feel about that, right? That's a big difference and I'm not sure about the gameplay. I, I'm just not. I think it looks like it could be good, right? But I'm not at the point where I want to think it's going to be good. I want to know that it's going to be right for me and that's the one I'm having trouble with sort of putting my head together. Hasn't funded yet though, that's the other interesting aspect. Usually with these, people will jump in and maybe cancel later, hasn't done either yet. Plenty of videos down here from the bottom, so no lack of exposure by any means. Several, several big channels, two, three, four, ten times my size, I don't know, whatever. But lots of big names talking about it already, so again, it's out there, shipping's a little bit more expensive, but how do you feel about that? Because again, if you go back up to the top here, not at 24 hours yet, probably about 16 hours at the time of me filming this or so, 
283 backers and only about 70% of the way funded. So is it really going to get the other 30% by the time this is sort of going to reach 24 hours? I don't think so. And so we'll kind of see where this goes because when these fail to fund, they plateau once the early bird ends. And so we'll see if this is a case of that as well. Quick update on time lancers as well. After the 24 hour early bird ended, yeah, they're still going up. Yeah, they're going to fund here in the next day or two. That's good. That's good that people aren't getting turned off by the early bird. That was my fear when I looked at this earlier in the week. So the fact that they've gained ground still, how much more ground are they going to gain and how quickly is it going to be? That's going to be the question. Next up, Phantom Division from Phantom Horizon, a remake of SEAL Team Flicks from Ezra. And Ezra is the one making this behind it in case you're also familiar with them with uh, the Catacombs 3rd Edition. And it's got a combination of those two systems here. Dexterity, uh, mission-based cooperative flicking on mats, a la your revamped edition of Catacombs. Only in this case, you're using tactical maneuvering with your flicking, just like SEAL Team Flicks in a sci-fi setting. Selecting your asymmetric character, preparing for your mission, getting the men, the objectives, the terrains, enemy setup, and then how you're going to deploy them as well as what you're going to be doing stealthy or loud with your items, uh, trying to neutralize your enemies as you go along the way. But it wouldn't be a game without this, right? If you couldn't loot, upgrade, and equip yourself even better. Complete the mission or not. Now, it doesn't say a whole lot about stretch goals because they're saying there's a ton of game content. There's a ton of upgrades already going into this because of the double-sided boards, the actual, I think this is all neoprene mat as well, and all the wooden pieces in the first place. So nothing right now. Uh, I think they've got the manual right here for the rule book, and you can try it online, although that'd be kind of weird online. I don't know if I could really do that one online. Uh, $85. And yeah, the previous Elsewhere games are more expensive because of those upgrades that already come with it. Uh, the officer pledge, though, and the agent pledge. And if we pull it up here, because again, there's not a great description uh, uh, prior to this. Uh, big box storage, playmat, 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 playmat. Okay, boss character. And so the agent one is just the playmats and the big box storage. So you're just getting a little bit more of everything. And the commander, let's see what the commander is. Is that like three little expansions as well? Yeah, so you're just getting tons more stuff. Extra bosses, extra playmats, fifth and sixth player expansion there as well. So it's a lot of money. But again, it's one of those where it's premium components as well already in the first place. That's probably the bigger concern is the $30 shipping right there because it's going to be heavy. You know, it's going to be a heavy game. So uh, if you're interested in this, I mean, again, this is significantly different. Um, I may be the person or one of the people getting a prototype here. Um, I was in contact with Aaron. And so if I am, I'll let you know in the comment section down below. Uh, but this is just over funding at the time of me filming this. And so we'll see where it goes the rest of the three week campaign. Last up here this week, we have Pacific Ocean, the card game, a little bit of a different set collection style game with different victory conditions that you're slowly building up throughout the game with an eye cut, you choose slight spin mechanism if you're familiar with that. And essentially what you're doing is you're drafting these cards. You draft three cards. You then take two of them. You place them in front of you. You put one face up, you put one face down. The other person then gets to choose which of those two cards they want. So are you bluffing? Are you showing me the card that you actually want to keep? Or are you putting the card that you actually think is going to be better face down? Because whichever one the opponent doesn't pick, you get. And then you add it to your tableau. And your tableau is going to be the top parts of the card up here or the bottom card uh, or the bottom parts of the card down here, which are going to add the scoring conditions based on these things at the top. And so how you're managing the top and the bottom as you go along is going to be the gist of this game. 10 minutes, very straightforward, solo as well as a tropical fish expansion that changes how you're scoring it in the first place. Art's fantastic. Price point, let's check that out real quick. Let's see, print and play, uh, the Kickstarter exclusive level here, uh, $18, and then you get a little bit more deluxified level up here, but this was like an early bird, so it was about the same, so take it for what you will. But that's the gist of the game. It's kind of cool looking. Again, animals, right? I love the look of this though, actually. This octopus, freaking sweet. I'd like a picture of that on my wall, maybe. My two-year-old is obsessed with some of these animals, so. Anyway, this is what it is. Short, sweet, light filler. There you go, a little bit of shipping. Yeah, check it out. Updates, why aren't you backing waypoints? Why aren't you among the 4,400 people that are backing this right now like me? $22,000, $5 print and play, you have at least three maps, gonna be more than that probably by the time this campaign ends. They have a great pedigree with Aquamarine and Voyages already. If you like this sort of thing, 
color print it, laminate it. There you go. You're all set. 20 to 30 minute game. Fantastic. I don't even know completely how to play yet. And I am backing this at this point, right? This is why I do crowdfunding right here. You should be backing this. Go check this out. They give you enough information of how to do it right here. Like I just critiqued early in the video of not showing how to play. It's doing everything right. Postmark games, show them your love. If you're interested again, tell them Liege sent you, right? So thiefdom, you know, I'm really confused by this. People apparently just want to put their money on storage, uh, not in their bank accounts even. So, you know, you're pledging for a game that you're not going to get for at least a year and a half, at least a year and a half, because they're going to throw all of this money into a pledge manager. And, or maybe you're just one of those people that's, uh, not actually pledging for this game, but you're throwing your money in there right now to, you know, spend half of it on clans of Caledonia and the expansion from that aspect. Again, I think this game looks okay, but I don't see any reason whatsoever to not wait for more information, to wait for more reviews, for more online testing, and get it during one of the other two campaigns. It boggles my mind. Uh, I think it looks great, but I don't see any reason right now whatsoever. There you go. Speaking of things that boggle my mind, people just love animals, right? And people like this game, but I'm also one of those people that has no aesthetic appeal from animals. And... These are just sort of the new environmentally plant, forest, eco-friendly style of games uh, thematically incorporated that we've seen lately. Like animals plus or minus environment has been like the new Cthulhu zombies, right? I, I'm not joking about that. I'm dead serious about that. And this is a lot of money getting thrown around for a couple expansions and a reprint, which isn't widely available at retail. And that's really why I think you're seeing a lot of money come this way. Do I need a five player expansion? No, my answer is always no for five player expansions. But there's enough out there again you had a whole bunch of people loving this and game and hyping it so i think it's a solid game it's just probably not one for me it's one of those that i'd love to play at a game night but i'm never going to buy it or seek it out and probably myself at this point either so new tricks expansion new stuff do you need more is it going to make it overly complex that's the question speaking of overly complex Ah, just teasing you Lacerda fans, you Lacerda junkies, whoever, you know, you are and however you ended up on my channel in the first place. Inventions, evolutions of ideas. Again, this thing is massively, massively overproduced. Speaking of overproduced games, you know, again, people are going to say at the beginning, just like me, like, uh, I love the standees version of Tenera's Adventures, right? Because it's less massively overproduced and people are going to be like, oh, those miniatures are so uh, worthless and, you know, they're overproduced. This is just as overproduced, folks. The fact that this Euro game is $130 when you have equivalency going at retail for $40 or $50, right? So you can do it. You're choosing not to. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. Just like Chip Theory chooses not to make an inferior component-wise, inferior quote-unquote, product. And that's okay. But no false equivalency. Tenaris Adventures, too many bones, Lacerda games they're all the same in over deluxification non-essential gameplay elements being well a cost driving factor in all of them so if you don't like one you should not like all three of them equally discriminating right that's liege anyway i i don't know this game is too long for me I, if this game was two hours i could probably handle it if this is a three to four hour game especially better at three and four players peace out see you later can't do it but, I mean, people seem to like it, and you're getting all of these new promo stretches, which is the whole reason people get it on crowdfunding in the first place. You'll notice that none of it says exclusive, though, but there's a good amount of stuff there, so we'll see what it even looks like at the end. Because this is what's made it worthwhile, and this is why it still sells for almost its retail price on the secondary market, so take that for what you will. Stroganoff, almost $100,000 at the time of me filming this, relatively impressive for a big box fix and expansion. The expansion only being what, like 35 bucks or so? Yeah, so that's not horrible. It's just whether or not it's a game for you and whether or not you liked it in the first place. This Euro style race across tracks to gather resources, hunting, fishing, gathering in those aspects. Again, hunting, fishing, gathering, pick up and deliver. Pick up and deliver is not me. Uh, I've yet to find a pick up and deliver game that I really, really, really enjoy. Don't have one in my collection and this one's not gonna be the first one and I'm okay with that. But if you want new modules to go along with this to spice it up and to potentially eliminate the game breaking or uh, strategy breaking things that people have seen over in the comments section of the Board Game Geek forums, give it a look-see. But the real question is, do you need more? And sometimes the expansion answer is yes, but a lot of the time 
you haven't played the base game enough to justify it in the first place. So the answer is no. Castellians here from Daily Magic Games. Again, in the setting of the Valeria of the heavier little bit, at least in that sense of dice worker placement, $52,000 here. And they also said that they're not going wide retail anymore. They're going to be boutique now, if you don't remember that previously. And they're only going to have 250 games uh, through their web shop. And so, yeah, I mean, as some of these smaller games, the overhead, the production, I don't blame them for doing it. It's becoming the boutique thing to do for a lot of the boutique stores and companies. Crossbows and Catapults, again, about 11 days left. Just a very interesting dichotomy of what they put out versus, you know, something new and different. I don't know. Uh, you know, I've heard people that really are nostalgic and really want something like this, especially with the kids. And I think that's going to be where your mileage may vary. Is this going to be for you or is this really going to be your kids that are going to be playing this as well? And I think it sort of is that tweener. It sort of straddles the fence on both sides of a game like this. And personally, for me, I fall on one side of, you know what, I'm going to pass on it right now because I'm not going to be able to play this on their game table like they've got here. I mean, that's ideal, but for me personally, it's not going to happen. I think they're incredibly intuitive. I love the look of this stuff. It looks solid. It looks like it's going to hold up as well. So it looks like a great product. I just think for the price and for the utility for someone like myself at this point, it's an easy pass at the same time. Now, with the new stuff that you're getting as well that they've unlocked, you've got a little bit of extra down here in addition. You're getting this Warlord bundle and you're getting the bonus loot that they've uh, sort of unlocked with the additional stuff here. And you're going to get a little bit more if they can hit 700K. So we'll see if they have anything else more in store. It might become a better value, but I think it's only going to go up. And, you know, you've probably already made your decision uh, because these aren't make it or break it bonus loots either. So there you go. So there you go, that's the roundup. That's all we got. A little bit of new stuff, a little bit of updates. I'll probably do in the next week or so another should you back, like quick hits of all this stuff. Again, throwing a stronger opinion out there than rather just a generalized overview to help you figure out my own personal opinion thrown in there because I know that one tends to go over well and you guys like that one um, in addition. But uh, that's all I got. Otherwise, I filmed something super cool last night. I filmed my first collaboration ever with somebody that you'll know. Super excited by it. Made a fool of myself, I think. But <laughs> because uh, the topic, what, what they interpreted the topic as and what I interpreted the topic as was like slightly different. And so our lists were drastically different because of that. But at the same time, I think it's going to be a more entertaining video because of those differences as well. So we'll see. Um, I told my Patreon folks last night what it was and, and who it was with. So if you want to support me over there, you'll find out sooner. But um, that's all I got. Otherwise, I also am going to be announcing uh, the winner of the Bioshock uh, contest because that campaign is ending this weekend as well. So I will announce that in a completely separate video on the channel. And so pay attention to that if you're tuning in at all at this point and you want to see more. Otherwise, tomorrow we're going to be talking about July. What do we got going on in July? What's going where? Where is your money going to go? What do you need to look out for? What do you need to be aware of? Everything else in between. Hope you like the stuff. Taking a little bit of a slower approach right now. Um, you know, been consistent, but you know, I think I've overdone it a little bit in terms of my side of things as well. So I'm trying to pace myself a little better. That's all I got. That's all I got. Have a freaking fantastic weekend. I was hoping to have Friday off, but it just didn't work out. So next week, next week, I'm shooting for it. July four week though. So it's gonna be a weird week overall. So be it. Hope you have the holiday off. Stay classy. Peace out.